And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that he is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're gonna need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I don't feel good. I feel nervous. I really feel nervous. Oh, come on. Relax. Relax. Been to the cash machine? Yeah. Car clean? Uh-huh. Plenty of gas? Uh-huh. Mmm. Breath. How's your breath? It's fine. It's mouth twice. All right. I think you're all set. So just go uh, clean the pipes and it's a go. <clears throat> huh? Tell me you spanked the monkey before any big date. Oh, my God, he doesn't flog the dolphin before a big date. Are you crazy? That's like going out there with a loaded gun. Of course that's why you're nervous. After you've had sex with a girl and you're lying in bed with her, are you nervous? No. No. It's because you ain't got the baby batter in the brain anymore. The most honest moment in a man's life are the few minutes after he's blown his life. That is a medical fact. And the reason for it is that you're no longer trying to get laid. You're actually, you're thinking like a girl. And girls love that. I've been going out with a loaded gun. (laughs) (laughs) It's like us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course. It teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom, class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. The basics of Lycus 101 go as follows. For those of you new to this class, and it's now time for the summer session. Summer session? Wow. Uh, first of all, most importantly, that I say this in all seriousness, you must know what this class is not We're not here to give you marriage counseling. What do I know about marriage? Divorced four times. Kid me? Don't call here and ask me to fix your marriage. I couldn't fix my own marriage. (laughs) Just. All right? I am not here to tell you how to make friends, how to make female friends. I am here to tell you how to get laid. By expending a minimum amount of money, energy, and time. That's my job. And my job is to remind you of some of the women you don't want to date. And some of the things you shouldn't put up with. Because women are just uh, arrogant. Arrogant little prisses. That's what they are. You know, they all think they've got the magic vagina. And that you should pay top dollar for that vagina. Let's be frank. Vaginas are indeed like buses. If you miss one, another one will come along in 10 minutes. Your job is not to treat women like they are God's gift, because they're not. Let's take this to a dessert model, okay? Let's take this to cake, okay? Now, some of you may like Antonman's Donut Holes. You ever go to the supermarket and get Entenmann's Donut Holes? Entenmann's. It's a known brand name. And you may say to yourself, God, I love these. God, I love these Donut Holes. I love them. But if for some reason you can't get Entenmann's Donut Holes, guess what? Winchell sells Donut Holes too. So does uh, here in L.A. Yum Yum Donuts. They have Donut Holes. There are donut holes all over town. If you can't get one donut hole, you'll get another. 
you have to think of chicks like like cake. Miss one, you'll get another. Stop treating them like gold. They're not gold. They're chicks. Please. I'm serious. We don't spend more than forty dollars on a date. Zero is optimum. We don't. Uh, we don't tolerate the idea that a woman doesn't put out. It's the three strikes you're outlaw. If a woman doesn't put out the first three dates, move on. There's no chemistry. It isn't happening. We don't want female friends. We've got enough friends. The reason we go out on a date is to get laid. To get laid. If you have a date scheduled for this coming weekend. And getting laid is not on the menu. If you're not sure that's going to happen, if that's not your ultimate goal, cancel the date. Why waste money and time buying drinks and buying meals for women who are not going to give you something in return? Don't let the women intimidate you. This is quid pro quo. If you're spending money on a woman, you expect to get something in return and that's it. If you're not going to get it, don't do it. Don't do it. Some other rules, boys. These are some of the ones we haven't talked about in a while, but it's important to talk about these. No coffee dates. No lunch dates. The the, the light of day should never hit her face. First of all, you're going to find out how old she is. (laughs) You might not want to do that. But also, let's be honest. When you go to coffee with a woman, you go to lunch, she's not going to have sex with you. When you go out with a woman, there has to be alcohol involved. And low-level lighting. It's got to be. Got to be. Period. Seriously. I, I tell women all the time, I can't do lunch. I don't do lunch. I can't do lunch. I don't do lunch. That's it. You will not see me at lunch with a chick. It just doesn't happen. We got four and a half million listeners. People see me in public all the time. Have you seen me at lunch with a woman? No. I won't do it. I won't do it. No lunch, no co- No Starbucks. But a chick says, oh, why don't we get together at Starbucks? No. Saying get together at Starbucks is like saying, uh, let's get together at the public library. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing. You want to make sure you're going out at night. You want to make sure there is alcohol or some other chemical substance. You do not want to be, I'm serious. You do not want to be going out during the day. Oh, let's go to the park. Let's let's pick up some lunch and go to the park. No. No. You can do that after you've been tapping that ass, but not before. Because then you become her gay friend. You don't want that. I can't make this any simpler. We don't date single mothers, finally. We don't want to babysit. We don't want to spend money. And we don't want to knock somebody up another time and then be responsible for paying for that. We just don't. We have sex with a condom 100% of the time. Not because we care about HIV or sexually transmitted diseases. We don't want to pay these broads for having had sex with us at some point in the past. Don't be an idiot. You may have questions for your professor about getting laid without having to spend money, time, or energy. Uh, There are many women out there who agree with your professor and many who violently disagree. We encourage a meaningful, substantive debate. So if you are ready to, to either question your professor or debate your professor... This is the time to do it. Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Likes 101. 
It's Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, Tom, how are you? Great. First time caller, long time listener. It is an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Sure it is. Um, well, I've, um, just an average guy that's kind of been through it all. Uh, 15 year marriage, divorce. Uh, I got some kids out of it. Um, kind of went through the, uh, the whole divorce, kind of shattered, depressed, uh, wondering what went wrong, kind of, kind of moved on from there. Uh, got a girlfriend, uh, living with her. Now I know how you feel about that, but, you know, unfortunately, why do you, why do you need to live with her? Well, you know, it works out. It works out easier for me that way. Now, what do you mean? I mean what, what does that mean? It takes care of all the things around the house where I don't even have to deal with them. All I got to do is just concentrate on my program. But you understand and, you could hire someone to do that and it would be cheaper than having a girlfriend. Yeah, but maybe on your salary I can understand that, but you know I'm on, not on talking about I'm not talking about average yeah. wage and, and well, I by do, the way I, I'm talking in. <laughs> I'm not talking about my salary. I mean, how much does it cost to have a housekeeper? <laughs> you know, it, it's it's not like that, Tom. I mean, it, it it's uh, you know, in 15 years of marriage, man, the wife did everything, dude. She, you know, she paid the bills. She took care of all the little things, all the headaches that I didn't have to worry about. Now you're all paying I had to for worry it. About was work, and now you you're know, paying for it. You're right, absolutely, and you know what? You just you kind of you you, you kind of deal with it how it falls, you know. No, but, you don't. But you don't have. You know what? It fell that way because you set it up. You're right. You're absolutely right. But you know, my dilemma right now is the girlfriend that I'm with. She can't stand condoms. All right? Yeah, I bet she can't. And you know why? Because she won't get any money. Well, my problem is, is this, I mean, right when we get into it, of course, you know, she gets the lubricants out and be, she takes care of me on the lubricant side, but then she applies a condom where it's easy to just grab it and yank it off. Well, that's what she's doing. Why do you and let her do the, it? Well, come on. I mean, in the middle of it, you're just going to kind of... Yes. I know, but dude, it's not that easy. Yes, I tell you what, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier than sending checks to her too, which is what you're going to be doing. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But if you know that, you would not. You wouldn't be arguing with me about this. You would be stopping her from doing that. All right. Well, any tricks or techniques that you can at least give me that? Yes. Don't have sex with women who take your condom off. <laughs> so I need to attack it that way. And just you have to. Rules and just say, you know, that you can't change her. All right, all right. You can only change yourself. Hmm. Okay. Well, you have control. Not- yeah, but you're giving it up. Well, I mean, has she I- told you what will happen if she gets pregnant? Well. Yeah, I mean, we've already talked about, you know, abortion and everything, but... Why did she uh, tell you? uh, Well, yeah, she's up for it, but... uh, She's up for it. What do you mean she's up for it? She she guarantee you that she'd have an abortion if she got pregnant? Well, let's just put it this way. She's (laughs) mid-40s. She's in no position to have another child. So, yeah, I mean... Well, well, why hasn't she been sterilized? But that's where I don't trust her on that. That's my okay? point. All right. I know. I get your point. I understand. I mean, instead of actually putting something together during during sex, you want me to nip it in the butt before we even get into sex. Right. I see. Okay. And if she insists on having sex with a condom, you have to stop. Oh, man. <laughs> Now, yeah, come on, I do, Alan, I, Alan, I, you're, you're Alan, correct. you're not and 17. No, you're 39 right. years old, and you are capable of stopping. Yep, yep. I mean, I've ducked a, a pretty big bullet recently, so, I mean, I should... What do you mean by that? that? Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe I'm going to be sharing this with you. Um, well, you know, I mean... The divorce and everything went through, and uh, I mean, I've already, I've, let's just put it this way, I've already paid for an abortion, not thinking right, coming out of the, coming out of the divorce, getting stupid. Who, with, I, well, the abortion was with whom? Uh, with, uh, well, with my ex, actually. Oh. I know, dude. Jesus. 
<laughs> Tell me you're disappointed in me. Yes, Pal, I'm no. beyond disappointed in you. You have your foot on the gas and you're heading for a brick wall. Yeah. I mean, d do you just not care what happens the rest of your life? Do you not care? Do you want to spend the rest of your life on Disney cruises or the rest of your life on uh, Shrek DVDs? Is that what you want? No, but you know what? Realistically, you don't think of it that way, man. When you That's go what divorce, it is. I know, but listen to me, honestly. My personal opinion is when you go through a divorce and you come out of that and you're feeling crappy, if you're paying the woman that you just spent, I mean, I have I have kids with this with this woman, of course, so I'm paying her. Now, if she's going to give me a little on the side and I'm paying for it, well, why not take it? And that was my mentality. But but and but, but this is sloppy. what you get. This is what you get. Exactly. They love having that thing to, uh, to to hound you about forever. They love it. Well, I tell you what, man. Like I said, I'm I I, I, cons I consider myself a pretty sharp guy. I mean, I I, I don't know why. I don't, I don't have a master's degree, and I, I make a clearly living. But realistically, you know, and how much do you pay out to the ex? Uh, let's see. I pay her about fifteen hundred a month. Fifteen hundred. That's eighteen thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, though, when you start a family and you got the family thing going on, and you're all wrapped up in that program, and you think it's working, and the kids fine. So now you're paying. Are you paying eighteen thousand a year, pal? And now you're just recklessly running the risk of paying more. Uh, you know what, brother? I understand that. That's why. That's why I'm calling you because, you know, I, I dude, to come out of that and to go in exactly where, it's like I, I, I don't know, I didn't learn anything, that's for sure. What? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, to come out of a 15-year marriage and have kids and to deal with that whole thing and get raped, man. I mean, I got raped through court and everything. It was ridiculous. I was, And I'm a straight shooter. I'm a stand-up guy. I did everything by the rules. You know, let me talk about You want to use a rape analogy? I have cousins, tragically, who were raped. It was terrible. And you know what happens after you've been raped? You stop going out late at night. You stop walking down dark alleys. You, you start to be a little more suspicious of people when you see them coming at you. Okay? That's what people who've been raped do. Clearly, you weren't raped hard enough. Because you're still walking down the same dark alleys uh, with your panties down. Uh, you know, you... you you're, I'm speechless. You're right. <clears throat> I don't know what to say. I need to do a reality check and and uh, and apply it. Yes, absolutely. You for, you tell me you've been raped, and then you're doing and the I, same I, thing. I, just, I, that, I use that word as I, I mean I, I I didn't mean to actually. Fine. Use that word. No, no. It was a, fine. If that's how you feel, I'll buy it. But if you were raped, why would you run the risk of getting raped again? Well. No, I understand that. Like I said, I mean, men mentally, if I'm paying for it and it's there, I'm thinking, why not? And, you know. I'm because you go from paying $18,000 a year to paying $25,000 a year. That's why. Mm. Mm. Well, very good, my man. Very Hang good. on a second, Alan. Doug, what did you want to say to Alan? Oh, I, I can't believe this guy. I mean, I went through a 10-year battle. I'm going to play child, pay child support. But any guy who's going to put away a woman who plays a game of ripping these things off, one, if you can't stop, something's wrong with you. And two, if you need to keep a woman like that in your life, you're a damn shit. You're looking for more problems. I mean, this guy, he had no business calling you. He's not a student of like us one on one. That's my opinion. Hmm. What do you think, Alan? Well, you know what? Everybody's got their own life. Everybody, you know, leads a different life. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Everybody seems that when they're sitting in their car and they're listening to this, they turn into a psychologist and all of a sudden they have all the answers. But when you're on the phone and you're actually bringing it out in the open... No, no, buddy, I did the same thing he did, but I stayed away from women for five years. I was so wounded and raped. I want nothing to do with women for five years. I was paying court bills for ten years. 
I wasn't, I mean, it was painful and expensive, and I wasn't foolish enough to be so horny to go jump into the next situation. I just don't get it. You must have money to burn. I don't, I don't understand the way you think about this. I'm not judging you on basing on nothing I know nothing about. I'm judging you on basing going through the same similar things. That's why I'm playing car psychologist. All right, I see. It's a little difficult to hear what you're saying because you're talking so loud, but no, I did get most of that. <laughs> Usually people say the opposite. Well, I mean, put it this way, man. It's difficult to talk to people that's never been through it. It's difficult to talk to people well, that... Well, I've uh, never been through it. Well, I mean, you've been divorced four times. But do you know, but, you know but, yeah, but, but, but I've ne- but I tell you what, I've never been through. Having kids with somebody I don't want to have kids with, paying alimony, paying child support. Well, no, by, by the way, that. that's not luck. That's by design. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's so unbelievable, man, who you talk to nowadays because it's, it's, it, when there's kids involved, it's like, all right, well, do you try to make it work with the ex because you're there and you have an impact no. on your kids' lives or do you just pay Having, the bill you don't have, on? You don't have to have sex with your kid's mother to, uh, to, to make life better for your kids. Well. You're, you're delusional. Uh, I guess in some ways I would. How would having sex with your kid's mother improve life for your kids? Well, I don't know, man. I'll be honest with you. You're the one who's been through it. Educate me. I want to know. Things are a lot easier. You know, I mean, we went through we went through some serious fighting. And You're not answering the question. I, no, no. I don't want a filibuster. I want an answer to the question I asked you. Okay, well... Specifically, I asked you, how would having sex with your ex-wife improve life for your children? Well, in my position, we're not fighting anymore. We're not attacking... That's because you're having sex with her? You know what? That's what it seems like. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're not having sex with her now, are you? No. So, are you fighting? Well... No, I've kind of got her in the position where she's actually uh, wanting me. And so, I've kind of backed off a little bit. There you go. It's, it's, so you see, you having sex with your ex-wife doesn't make life any better for your kids. No, it just makes it... Put it this way. You, know, you yeah, by the way, don't, don't, lie don't, lie don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. I hate when people lie to me. You're, you're lying to me. You know, the fact is, you said earlier in this conversation, it was there and it was easy. You said that. Well... You were not doing this for the good of your kids. You were doing it for your, to, to get your crank yanked. Tom, when you're going through a divorce and you're getting your butt kicked, all right, it, it was it was a form of not quite surrender, but, you know, it was like, look, I don't want to do this anymore because everything that I went up against was against me. So what does having sex with your ex-wife have to do with that? Well, like I said, it... it pacify things and it calmed things down to where we weren't at each other's throats we weren't fighting it was it was more where we were relaxed and we were talking and and it, that's where it kind of turned into and, and then she got pregnant worked. then she conveniently got pregnant and although she had an abortion it provided some drama and it got her some attention which is what all women want yeah absolutely i'll give that one to you yeah but you didn't do that for your kids. You did it for you. You even said, well, I'm paying for it. Why shouldn't I get... You said that. Well, that was the, egotistic, the egotistical side of me saying that. But on, in, in all There's nothing reality, egotistical about it. It's desperate. Hang on a second. Randy, what did you want to say to Alan? Well, Alan, I just want to know, since we're bearing it all out here, how much do you make a year? You said uh, you make a pretty good living. Well, you know, I mean, I'm I'm an average guy. I make about uh, about seventy grand a year. Seventy grand a year, dude. In the L.A. County, are you in are you in the L.A. County, Orange County area? Um, actually, no. I'm out in uh, Riverside area. You know, in Riverside, California, making seventy grand a year doesn't have you too much over poverty in my book, dude. At seventy grand a year minus fifteen that you're paying the X, you're making fifty five thousand a year. I don't know if I can afford a single bedroom apartment on $55,000 a year, and you're willing to knock it down even more 
by having another kid with another girlfriend. I can't believe this. You're going to be no, in the food stamp line. No, no. Hey, wait a second. I'm not talking about having another kid with another girlfriend. No, no, no. Tom had mentioned to me, why am I living with a woman? And I told him that it's easy. It's 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 actually cheaper. I mean, until she pulls your together. condom no, off, no, until she pulls your together. until she pulls your condom off, and you knock her up, and then you have to pay her too. Then Making we'll see if it's cheaper. The year in Southern California is the poverty level, and you're at half of that. I can't believe it. Well, I mean, it is what it is, man. But you're willing to, to knock this woman up because you're wanting to have sex without a condom, and she's going to pop out another kid, and she might or might not have an abortion. You can't make her do it if she doesn't want to. And if she has another kid with your name on it, you're going to feel another 1000 bucks or more a month. Man, it must be nice to make twenty, twenty five hundred dollar a month payments to these people that have kids with you, and you're only making seventy grand a year. Oh my God, I cannot imagine being in your shoes. Well, all I know is I'd be looking for the beans on sale at the market. <laughs> well. Basically, the reason why I called up Tom is because I recognized the problem, and I was just basically trying to get an idea of how I could I could nip this in the butt without being you know, an ass. You know, I mean, you're not being an ass. You're not having sex without a condom. End of story. All right, all right. That doesn't make you an ass. And if she doesn't like it, it's your way or the highway. Right on. You won't. You won't be that way, but you should. Well, no, I I listen to you more than you think I do. I mean, well, it, it is a little difficult to take it to take in. Uh, you are, you are now down to the point. You are now down to the point where you think that wearing a condom, which is not making someone else do something, it's you doing something, would make you an ass. Well. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Tom, for the information. No problem. Tom Likas. Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yes. The Tom Likas Show. Likas 101 from Hollywood. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Your questions for your professor. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Marielle, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Great. Wonderful. Hey, I was just calling to say number one to the guy who was just on. Hopefully he's still listening. Keep the condom on. And if you don't want to have a child with this lady, keep it on and keep communicating. I think that's very important in relationships. But I was actually calling about the earlier earlier argument that you had about, you know, guys being very um, superficial on looks with the girl that... You know, it was 160 at four, I don't know, 5.7. She was four foot 11. Yeah, at 160. Yes. Well, I'm six feet at 148, and I feel fat. So. <laughs> oh, well, well, believe me, you have got to see these photos on our MySpace. You've got to see them. Yeah, well, I'm not even near a computer, so <laughs> I will check them out later. Yeah, use your cell phone. Do whatever you have to do. Yeah, but hey, you know, a lot of girls, too, are very interested in the same thing guys are i think there's a large population of women just like men that are interested in sex and doing things and being kind of crazy so it goes both ways so hopefully you know most of the guys listening pay attention to their bodies and their weight and you know are are it's an important part of their life to be attractive to women actually actually it's not as important because women will go with money power fame even a sense of humor now not all women but many yeah no i agree actually i do um you well, know, women have to you, look good yeah but if you have a sense of humor and, and actually the main thing i think for women or at least for me is can you communicate to me if there's an issue talk to me about it if there's something you want, talk to me about it. You know? Tell me. Well, we're not talking about having a relationship here. We're talking about getting <laughs> late. <laughs> okay. Well, Honestly, yeah, we don't want to... No offense. We don't want to talk to you. Yeah, I know. It's primal instinct. And it's the same thing for women. They want it, too, just as much as men do. No, no, no. But you see, even when women want it, 
they won't admit that to men. They will pretend that they, they, oh, I'm not that kind of girl. I don't want you to think I'm that kind of girl. I, I, it's very all rare. Women. Not I, all women. I didn't say all women, but <laughs> the, the preponderance of women. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if there's occasionally a needle in a haystack. Mostly yeah. you get a lot of hay. Yeah. I mean, pretty much I've been through, you know, relationships, and there have been times where I'm like, you know, this is all that I want. I'm going to go seek it and find it. I choose the guy. I'm done, bing bang, I'm not gonna call again. Right. But then you we tell the then thing. you tell other guys that you're not that kind of girl. But you are that kind of girl, just not with them. Right. But I'm honest. I'm one of those few. No, you're not honest because you don't tell guys, you know what, other guys I would jump right into the sack with, but not you. <laughs> well no, I'll be honest. I'll tell him. Yeah, you know, you're 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 so A poor, B unattractive, C homely, uh, that you're going to have to tell a few jokes or do something to convince me you're attractive because uh, right out of the shoot, I don't find you attractive. Or, uh, you know, uh, when I, I met a website you can go to. I met, I met a rock star and I jumped into the sack with him, but you're no rock star. You know, th no, that's no, 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 no. I'm talking about you, what you would be thinking you, oh, when you're I making see. up all this nonsense about not being that kind of girl. Right. Um, I know better. You are that kind. Of, you know why I know that? Because right. I know how many women have jumped into the sack with me, a lowly radio personality, because right. I'm on the radio. And then I know they've told other guys they're not that kind of girl. I'm telling you, you are that kind of girl. And when you come up to us and you say to us, oh, I'm not that kind of girl, we know that if we were a rock star, an actor, a GQ model, a tennis instructor, you would jump right into the sack with us. Okay, are you hot or are you heavy? What is it? Am I? Yeah. What does that have to, uh, We're not talking about me here. I'm talking about guys in general. Right. Okay. I'm okay. They, so you you tell guys you're not that kind of girl. Any guy who believes that is a fool. You're that kind of girl when you want to be that kind of girl. Absolutely. It's selective. So, so when you tell a guy I'm not that kind of girl, it's the biggest lie in the book. You're that kind of girl with guys you want to jump into the sack with. <laughs> well, what if I say I am that type of girl, but you're not the kind of guy I want to do it with? How's that, for oh, honesty? Would that, it would save us a lot of time, money, and energy. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah, so like, why, you, why don't you start <laughs> doing that? And you know I why do. women? No, you, you, but you know what? Women generally don't do that. What they yeah. generally do is they try to suck as many free meals and free drinks out of us as they can. Not me, baby, not uh, me. Well, I'm, uh, we're talking in general. Generally, women in try general. to suck as many free meals and free drinks out of us as they can, while mm -hmm. they wait for us to tell the right joke or make them laugh or make them feel warm or remind them of their dad or whatever it is that would turn them on, other than being a rock star. And and so maybe uh, seven, eight, nine. Nine, ten times going out. Maybe eventually you'll give it up uh, to the guy who's not the rock star. Right. Well, but, I, but I, I would women say I, I I want the guys to know because this is after all primarily a course for guys. Right. Uh, I want the guys to know, and, and you will back me up on this. That when a woman says I'm not that kind of girl, she's lying. I know. I agree. I totally agree with you. I think most women are. Well, no, there's probably half of women that aren't. There's half of women that are. I mean, I'm Swedish. I was born sexual. I mean, hello. I want just the same thing. I want to come up to a guy and say, hey, I want you. Let's go. And then be done. It's very similar. Right. That's all, the point. Well, a guy is a there. fool. Oh, there. A guy is a fool. And he's uh, going to be in for spending a lot of money at restaurants and concerts <laughs> and uh, go seeing pl uh, the, 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 the plays like Wicked. They're going to be spending a lot of money on stuff. The guys, make, the guys who go to it. see Wicked in order to get laid, they, these are the guys who are not the rock stars. Yeah, so step it up. I know. Point Dexter from the IT department, who's a responsible guy, uh, he has to take you to see Wicked. I haven't seen Wicked, have you? Of course not. Or Sex in the City. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. No, I mean, I think there's traditional women out there still who want to find the right guy, you know, and will do a lot of things for him, not him doing things for her, because w some women really want to nest and they want to find the right guy. But if they don't... American women no use sex as a marketing chip, and that's why I don't date American women anymore. Well, I'm not American. I'm still Swedish. No, no, you're American, dear. Well, honey, yes, I am because I don't have an accent, but I still. No, no. Are, are you what? Are, do you have a green card? I do. 
So you're I not even. Vote. But I can't she, vote and I can't give blood. Why didn't you become a citizen? I don't want to. Why not? Swedes, Swedes are kind of cool. I like my country. Don't you want to vote? Uh, yeah, not right now. Not in this election. So, um, there you go. <laughs> Chicks on politics. <laughs> I know. It, it's it's kind of twisted, but. Anyway, I think there's a lot of really sexual women out there too who. Um, well, even when don't even when want even when women in this blind. country, even when women in this country are sexual, uh, they will not let, let on to the average guy that they are because that's a bargaining chip. Well, there's vulnerability too. Like, why not be vulnerable and real? Like, I'm not playing a game. I'm not going to be. You're playing a game because uh, again, if, it, if 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 a guy is a rock star, you jump right into the sack with him. Doesn't matter. He's got to hit he, me somehow. No, he do, he really doesn't have to. He really doesn't have to, and you know it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's uh, like it's one one. And let's say hi to Charity in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. Um, I just wanted to comment on what you're talking about. The girl that's what was she like five or four feet. 160 pounds. She's 4 foot 11 and 160 11. pounds, yes. Yeah, that's fat. I don't know have you seen where... the Have you seen the photos yet? No, but I can tell you that, you know, look at your MySpace photos. If you look at MySpace photos... I, you, you know what? I, I do believe the mayor of Portland could give her the keys to the city. <laughs> it's ridiculous because, you know, it's women who are using Photoshop. It's women who are using creative photography to make themselves look different. Nine times out of ten. Oh, I just want to say this about Carolyn, who called in. Uh, she did not do that. If you take a look, you could see some really explicit photos. And she doesn't say that she doesn't think that she's overweight. You got to see the photos. Oh, uh, well, I just wanted to comment that you're not out of line in your assessment of that. And, you know, and also on the other caller that you had, you know, he was at a dilemma where he was still having sex with his ex-wife and he was afraid she was going to rip the condom off. Right. No, no. He wasn't afraid she was going to rip the condom off. She rips the condom off. Oh, she does. You know what? He's not as smart as he thinks he is because he makes enough money. Go and get a vasectomy. Don't tell her about it. She's not going to know. And then if she comes to him saying, hey, I'm pregnant, he's going to know she's sleeping with someone else as well. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. And he, I mean, obviously, he's not that smart if he's putting himself in that situation again. He, it sounds like he has some issues, and he still wants to be with her. Otherwise, he wouldn't. No doubt about it. So, yeah, that's that's all I wanted to say. I don't listen to you very regularly. I'm starting to now. So, my boyfriend introduced you to. Uh, oh, really? So he's a big fan, and um, and are you I the only, are you? Let me ask you a question: Are you the only woman named Charity in Portland who doesn't work at Portland's many strip clubs? That's funny. Yeah, my name. I could either be a nun or a stripper or both. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. No. Which, I, I which are you? <laughs> neither. I'm far from a nun. I don't know how far I am from a stripper, but I I don't I'm not. A, a, I actually work in the mortgage industry. You, but. you would be the one and only woman in Parkland, because you know how many strip clubs are in Parkland. You'd be the one charity who there does not work a in a strip club. <laughs> That's right. Although you know I am young, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I just wanted to say that I uh, I've started listening to you more and more, and I um, I'm gaining respect for you, Tom. So. You're gaining respect, meaning yeah. you don't have much for me now, but. Meaning I am liking what I've been hearing recently, and I think you are quite on point on many things that I've heard. And you were shocked to find that out, weren't you? I was a bit uh, hesitant, but... Um... Hey, you're coming along. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.